Hello and welcome to the channel. If you are new around here, be sure to subscribe for daily FM content. Whether that's tactics, gameplay or other things, be sure to comment what you'd like to see. Link in the description below to my current series where you can see the tactic in action and also a link to all my socials. Enjoy the video and be sure to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome back to the channel, the final episode of the If I Were In Charge Premier League series. So before this episode ends, I want you guys in the comments below to give me some suggestions of what teams to do next. Worldwide, European teams, Champions League sides, even Championship. If you want to do any team recommended down in the comments below, it would be massively appreciated. But this last episode, we've got Wolves, who are expected to finish, I think, in the Europa League. So that should be 6th or 7th spot, depending on what happens in the Cup. So I'm pretty sure 5th is also a possibility as well. I reckon Europa League is definitely possible though. It's a very, very nice squad we've got here. FA Cup, fifth round. I think if you win the FA Cup or the Carabao, you do get Europe. I think that counts for the Premier League expectations as well. I'm not entirely sure. So you can finish that 10th, win the FA Cup and still have a good performance here. But for the FA Cup, I reckon you can get for the fifth round pretty convincingly. Europa League quarterfinal, it once again depends on draws and how your group stage goes and who you get in the first knockout rounds, pretty much. Not really luck, but it's kind of a hint of luck as well. A Carabao Cup fourth round, I wouldn't care too much. You do enter in the third round this time. It's not the second round, so you have got a game less than other competitors, but I wouldn't really focus too much on that. I think the main priority is Premier League, Europa League, and then the FA Cup. In terms of the team, we've got a five at the back formation or a three at the back, depending on how you look at it. But in goal, we've got Patricio, very solid goalkeeper, great reflexes, Great one-on-ones, great positioning, great uh, agility, balance, jumping reach, everything else like that. Aerial reach is high as well. Communication is good. Leadership is great. Very, very, very good goalkeeper. Probably one of the best outside the top six in terms of the Premier League. And probably outside Europe as well. One of the very, very much underrated goalkeepers on this game. Very, very nice. Six for three as well. We haven't got a sweeper keeper. He has actually got 15 rushing out. You can play him sweeper keeper if you wanted to. I probably would do that actually because of the higher line. But yeah, very all-round goalkeeper can play either normal goalkeeper or sweeper, depending on how you want to play. In defence, Willie Bolly, ball playing defender, 13 pass, 11 vision, good enough for this team to be a ball player. Great heading, great jumping, 14 marking, 16 positioning, 14 tackling, great aggression, great bravery. Leadership and work rate lacks a little bit, but it's not too important. But I won't read out all the attributes, guys. You guys can see for yourself. Decent pace as well, good physicals. Uh, six foot five as well, massive, massive centre back. Very nice player, 28 years old, got a few years left at least. Now we have gone for Den Donker in, in at centre back here. He's naturally on this game a centre mid, but he can play equally holding mid or centre back. He's a very nice ball player. Uh, you could probably buy a centre back and play him centre mid, but I don't want to drop Moutinho or Neves or that transfers later. But Den Donker as a ball player, 14 passing, 11 vision, very nice. Great marking, tackling, position is quite low. But he's not too important at three at the back. You have got two centre backs to cover him if need be. Good heading and jump is not lack in there compared to other centre backs. Six foot two, quite small, but on the ball, he's a lot better than other centre backs. Very, very nice player overall. 24 years old, a lot of years left. Uh, Connor Cody, probably your best centre back. 15 passing and 15 vision at centre back is absurd. 26 years old, great bravery, great determination, great leadership as well, great work rates. Tackling, marking, and positioning 13 and above. 15 technique of a centre-back is pretty hard to come by. Uh, physicals, not the quickest. He's not the quickest. But uh, you have got some good players around him, though. Uh, very, very nice centre-back. I would probably have these three centre-backs here for a good few years at least, unless some regens come through. Not much to improve on there. Maybe then Don can move forwards, like I say, and put a centre-back of own in there. But overall, this back four here, very, very, very good for a Europa League push. Uh, Wing-back Doherty, good crossing, good dribbling. Once again, not electric pace. You do lack a little bit of pace at the back. Uh, but once again, decent defensive. Off the ball is 14 as well, which is very, very high for a fullback. Wingback support, we've got him on. Overall, a very nice player. Same with Johnny. Now, the thing is, he's right-footed. I don't like left, left backs that are right-footed. I don't like right backs that are left-footed. I don't know why. I just don't like it. But good work, great. Decent pace for once. Good determination, great bravery, great concentration. Can defend. A little bit worse at attacking than uh, Doherty is. 11 off the ball, 14 crossing, 13 dribbling, 12 technique. But overall, very decent player. We've got him as a wing back. You can play him vote wing back. I wouldn't bother with that. I've never done it myself. I have no idea if it's good or not. So I'm not going to recommend it to you guys if I have no idea if it's good. In midfield, Ruben Neves. Incredible player. We've got him as a DLP support. Not defence. I think we're wasting his, wasting his going forwards ability if he was defensively. But first, 17 passing, 17 vision. 
16 technique. Once again, great free kick taker. You guys know what it's like in real life. Off the ball is only 11, which is quite surprising. I'm surprised by that, but it is good enough to be a good player for you. He is 22 years old, can still improve quite a lot. He can obviously move to big clubs like Man U or seem to go to Barcelona. Seen him at PSG as well, so you can get some big money for him if you were to sell him. But I'd keep him as much as possible. He is probably your best centre mid by a mile. Moutinho there, I've gone for an AP attack just because I love the role so much. The role is incredible and also Moutinho fits it perfectly. Great first touch, great passing, great teamwork, great vision, great technique, decent flair. Great dribbling, great first touch. I've said that already, I think. Does lack a little bit in physicals, I will say. Physicals aren't the best. But he is very, very, very good. Even if traits, tries the killer ball, comes deep, takes tempo, looks for pass rather than scoring. He pretty much suits the AP attack down to a T in midfield. He will get you so many assists this year. I can guarantee that. Uh, winger support, Adama Troy, I will know. His pace is 20. It's absurd. Great dribbling. He can't cross, though. He can't cross. He can't pass. He, he's basically a pace merchant on this game. He is very good though. Good dribbling and good pace. You basically want him to run down the wing and to try and cross it in and cause some problems. So all you've got to do. 10 crossing is quite poor. He's 23 years old. It can improve. He has got a star in terms of ability upgrades. Uh, but definitely try and get his crossing up. Try and get his passing up. World Cup 2010, which I'm surprised about. I think next FM, FM21, he'll be a lot better than what he is now. But overall, decent player. He basically just knocks the ball and run. I've played against him. Knocks the ball down the right wing. He runs. He tries to do something with it. Very, very useful player. Uh, Jota on the left-hand side. Much more technical. Much more technical than uh, Adama Traore. Still pretty quick. But 16 dribbling. 15 finishing. 14 first touch. 13 passing and 12 vision. We've gone for attack rather than support because his vision's only 12. If it was a bit higher, we'd go for support. But I'd rather attack there. Off the ball is great. Flair is great. Determination is great. Once again, 22 years old. You've got some very young attackers. Experienced defence, young attackers, can't really go wrong with that. And up front, we've gone for Jimenez, pressing forward attack. Very, very, very nice player. Great aggression and bravery and work rate. Them three stats alone make your pressing forwards very good. 15 first touch, 15 acceleration, 14 pace. He does move into the channels, which is annoying. It is an annoying trait to have. I guess he closes down a bit more, but overall, try and get rid of that if he could. But as a striker, he will get you 15, 20 goals a season. I can assure you that him and Moutinho linking up is very, very nice. In terms of mentality, going for a positive mentality, and uh, in possession, shorter passing, fairly wide, pass into space, play for set pieces, and low crosses, pretty much default. Apart from passing into space is very, very important, especially if Moutinho and Neves in midfield. If you can get them to pass in behind, very, very, very good. Counter, press, and counter. Now, centre-back distribution, sorry about that. We've gone for that just because our ball players at the back are very, very nice. A higher line of it, higher line of engagement, higher defensive line. You have got a bit of pace. You have got three at the back, so it's not too important to have a standard line. I would probably stick it higher just to close the gap a bit more and press the attackers a bit more. Uh, pressing intensity more urgent. You have got some good work rates up top and in midfield. Uh, that is pretty much it for the tactic. I think yeah, we've covered all the tactical areas. In terms of transfers, you got 13 million plus 80k a week to spend. You have got a few players joining you. Uh, in when they're joining you next year or the year after that, in fact, uh, Kitalano and Catrone. Um, oh, that's going out. Sorry, you've got some money coming in, is what I'm trying to say. You've got some more money coming in, but 13 mil. I'd probably look to either get a centre back and move Den Donker forwards, or you could just go to a four at the back if you wanted to and use Den Donker as a midfielder there. I do like the box to box role this year, so Den Donker. He isn't wasted as centre back, but he's not utilised as much as centre back. So I would try and look to get him in midfield. I would probably look to get a backup left back and maybe improve Traore if you're not looking for pace and looking for more technical ability. Maybe go for Traore. But that is it, guys, for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed the whole series, really. Episode 20, we finally made it for the whole of Premier League. Let me know once again, guys, in the comments below of what teams you'd like next thing. Maybe Bayern, PSG, some Dortmund, some Barcelona, Real Madrid. Let me know in the comments below. Massively important you guys help me out. And I hope you guys enjoyed the series so far. Hopefully it carries on for many, many FMs to come. Not just this FM. FM21, but we'll do the same again with the Premier League. But I hope you guys enjoyed the series. Like if you're new, like and subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you, all guys, see you guys as an awful outro. I'll see you guys next episode. See you later, guys.